Welcome to another episode of Whiskey Talk 4. What the F? Hosted by the internet's best Vietnamese and Bulgarian whiskey duo. I'm Wynn. And I'm Plamen. Welcome to episode 6 of Whiskey Talk 4. What the F? Happy St. Patty's Day! Woo! That was my boob. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, we have Carl Biggs coming back here as a guest. Second time. It's my yeah. favorite guest. Paul, can you believe it? Six months? I know. Doing this. Six episodes? Time has flown. I know. I'm so stoked about this. And so, as a special half anniversary, we're doing three bottles. Woo! And we're deviating. It's no longer scotch. It is Irish whiskey. Why is it Irish? St. Patty's Day. We have three very distinct bottles of Irish whiskey in front of us. Yes. So let's start with Carl's bottle first. Right. Carl, what do you got for us? I got the Prepper 12. And I came across this because I saw the best Irish whiskey commercial ever <laughs> online. Yeah. Because this is the whiskey of Conor McGregor. Mr. Notorious MMA yeah. himself. And if you haven't seen his commercials, look him up. They're hilarious. They are really good. You sent them to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And one day I just decided you gotta go buy a bottle of this because I want to know how good it is. Yeah. So, yeah. Ended oh, up yeah. getting it. And you picked it probably because of the tiger on the bottle, didn't you? I, yeah, I think so, yeah. <laughs> you didn't even notice bottle. the tiger? I, didn't notice, I just noticed the tiger. Nobody told me about oh, that until now. I thought just because you like tigers. <laughs> I love tigers. Anyway for it. That's amazing. I never noticed there was a tiger on nice. the bottle, actually. Well, what did you got for us today? So, I want to thank Carl and you both. It was a team effort tracking this one down. It's the yeah. Jameson Cold Brew Special Edition. It has whiskey and coffee, and it made me really excited because I'm... Obsessed with espresso. Yeah, that's one of our cocktails today, right? We're gonna do an Irish coffee. Yes. This one was hard um, to find. It yeah. just came out too. Yeah. So that's 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 another thing. Yeah. yeah it's hard to get too, guys. Uh, I went and picked it up, and the store, the guy was pretty much saying oh, they've never had it. I, I think, called it. I called it with special contacts yeah. to like <laughs> track down this bottle. It, yeah, it's a little hard to find right now. Yeah. But I'm excited. Yeah. It's a limited edition release, right? Brand new release as well for. the the year 2020. And you can't say whiskey and coffee in the same sentence without freaking people out. Like, of course it's gonna sell out. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's gonna true. be good. All right, well, as far as hard to find bottles, I brought <laughs> the king. Lord Lieutenant Kinahan's single malt Irish whiskey, Ooh. age 10 years. Ooh. Nice. So, my heart's fluttering. As far as like hard to find bottles, that one's impossible. This isn't even sold in Virginia. Uh, really? Like ABC stores do not carry Kinahan's mm -hmm. at all. If you go onto the website and just type in K I N A, it just stops. Like no, nothing else mm -hmm. shows up after that. Like all of the oh man, like no suggested wow. bottles. So I do have to thank Dr. Robert Clark for giving me this bottle. He first introduced it to us at uh, uh, my wedding. I remember it very <laughs> clearly. I went back for seconds. Then recently he gifted me this bottle, so I was oh. saving it for a special occasion. Yeah. What better? Then our half anniversary oh, of yes. our podcast. <laughs> Boom, six months in. Now we're about to add three more bottles to the list. I'm so excited. Super excited. Paul, you want to explain the process? Yeah. So first, as with every whiskey, it doesn't matter that it's Irish now, right? It's a little bit outside of our norm. But you're going to pour just enough so it doesn't tip out of the glass when we tip it over. Then you nose, taste, and then you breathe out slowly and just enjoy everything that's happening, right? And that's going to happen neat. So yeah. we always start out neat. No matter what. Oh, I'm gonna interrupt you real quick right there. Yeah. So this time around, I recently learned something because I've been, you know, trying to learn a bit more about whiskey. To fully experience a whiskey, you should also just leave it out at room temperature in a Glen Cairn or a nosing glass mm. to let it build up that bouquet or aroma inside the glass. Okay. So I do have some glasses set aside just for that. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, so we'll have a, a set of these set aside and then when we're pretty much through our whole process, we'll go back and taste it. You're like venturing dangerously into wine territory oh. with this strategy. I actually learned a little bit from Eric last <laughs> week when uh, I went to his winery. So it is part of that. Yeah. You know what? What if we tried aerating the whiskey? Oh. So I have aerators. Maybe we'll the next that, episode. We'll, okay. do. <laughs> we'll move forward yeah. with that next time. Future tests. <laughs> so after the neat, we're going to add a little bit of water. Uh, with the higher proof whiskeys, it's always nice to kind of take some of the edge off and really get more of the the body. Mm -hmm. So that'll be next. Then we'll add some ice, much to my dismay. I won't get into it too much, but some of these are actually made to be drinking over ice. Actually, so, I was going to make a comment about that because yeah. in the commercial for Proper 12, he always has a large ice cube in the glass. So, so somebody yeah. once said, 
this might be a whiskey that's designed to be drank with ice. Mm -hmm. So we're going to yeah. test that out. So Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll make cocktails. What are cocktails today? Irish coffee. Right. So yeah. that's coffee, Bailey's, Irish whiskey. Boom. Done. Delicious. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Our other cocktail, Irish car bombs. So we're going to do an Irish car bomb <laughs> with each of these. And if you don't know what that is, you got to watch this episode because yeah. we're going to show you how to do a proper Irish car bomb. Oh, um, yes. That's when the party starts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Carl's getting ready for it. My wife's here to drive me home. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a little fun today and then uh, just see where it goes. Cool. <laughs> so, again, happy St. Patty's Day. Happy St. Patrick's. All right, yeah. so let's start. What's uh, first? For this episode, we're going to start with the proper 12, and then we're going to go to the Jameson coffee, and then the Kent Hands to wrap it up. I'm so ready. Carl, uh, this is your bottle, so why don't you pop it open and... All right. Gives a taste. Uh, this is called proper number 12 because this is from District 12 of Dublin, and so they wanted to make a proper whiskey yeah. that is true to the Ireland, and so he named it after his home neighborhood. I believe it's his home neighborhood. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, he's, look that he's from uh, Dublin 12. That's yeah, legit. So, and so that's District where the name comes from. Dublin. So this is supposed that's to be true. a proper Irish whiskey from District 12 of Dublin. That was a good pop. Oh yeah. I, I like it when it just so nice. <laughs> a little bit uh, splashed on me, so now I'm gonna be very fragrant all day. I just want to take the moment mm -hmm. to thank or am I doing Carl's numbers? wife Kim you gotta for making for us these amazing shirts. Right, we got a half anniversary shirt. These uh, whiskey top form shirts. Yeah, how long did it take Kim to uh, make these shirts, Carl? It wasn't terribly long, but uh, just setting up the pattern took oh. a minute just to get it to so be nice. the right so nice. level. But uh, one shirt probably took maybe half hour. These yeah. shirts are amazing. Yeah, we want to. So we want to thank Kim. Uh, yeah. Shout out! Yeah. Shout out to her Instagram handle. So she does it along with two of her friends, I believe, and their Instagram handle is something Asian. Something Asian. Yeah. We'll plug that right below. Check if you it need out. anything, you know, any goodies mm -hmm. made by three very yeah. cute Asian girls. Check them quite frequently because they're making something different all the time. So. Oh yeah, they yeah. made. They made yeah. the uh, coasters for your yeah, wedding, wedding, wedding. They made all favors. of our coasters. Which I saw our... some ornaments yeah. that, that you I have got so many Christmas. of those coasters. Those coasters <laughs> my, my mom yeah. loved them. <laughs> oh, this again, your bottle. So, uh, when you start us off, and what, what do you smell? I think the first thing, and it probably sticks out the most, is um, unlike a lot of whiskeys I've had, it does have a strong alcohol smell. Most whiskeys are probably going to have a smell where you can kind of smell the casket was in, maybe some of the flavors. Uh, but there's kind of a distinct alcohol smell itself. And so I'm yeah. gonna say that's like pretty prominent in, Definitely. in the nose. So I, I, I do think there is a reason for that. And this happens with a lot of uh, Irish whiskeys because they're triple distilled. When you do that, you do strip out a lot of the flavors that you would get from the grains and malts that would otherwise go into it. Because every time you distill it, you remove, you purify it, right? Mm -hmm. So you just, it's just more alcohol forward and less of anything else interfering. So that might be part of the reason for it. And I believe that um, Proper 12 is, is yeah. right on the label, triple distilled triple Irish distilled. whiskey. Are you saying that triple distillation gives it a more ethanol type flavor or the lack of maturity? When you make the whiskey, right, you make like a beer mash. Yeah. Mash, and then that comes out at like, you know, four or six percent alcohol, yeah. and then you distill that down. But every time it passes through the distillation column, copper strips out any of the Impurity, impurities right. and yeah. whatever. So impurities is flavor, pretty much, right? You do want some of it gone, but every time you pass through, it does become clearer and clearer and clearer. So essentially, that's what happens with, like, say, vodka or something like that. It's just just to the point where it's super, super smooth, yeah. but the only flavor is alcohol. Yeah, okay. I, I see what you're saying. Cool. My yeah. assumption. Again, I mean, like, yeah, yeah. As much as I know about the whiskey making product, that's, that's my, my yeah. best guess at it. We'll have more authority once we start making it ourselves. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Coming soon. God. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I knew you were going to throw it in there. Oh, my God. I am so tempted. Oh. Just take a drink. <laughs> well, what do you have on your uh, nose? I'm trying to branch out with my descriptors here, getting a little more uh, plumbing esque. <laughs> okay, what do you got for me? So I got clean, and I think that's that's part of that that alcohol clean whatever, mm -hmm. right? So clean uh, laundry, clean what? Just clean. Just clean. Just just. I'm, I feel a sense you. of clean. Yeah. Caramel. Ooh. It's definitely gonna yeah. have a little hint of caramel. Caramel. Yeah. caramel. <laughs> as as, as Carl said, the caramel. 
Yeah. <laughs> a lot uh, of caramel in there. <laughs> Alright, this last one is for you, Plumman. A spring grass field with wildflowers. Yes! <laughs> you nailed it. We're done. Move on to the tasting. <laughs> I can't top that. Hey. I can't top forget my That's notes. what I got. Alcohol. Go all the floor. Nice! It is. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. It, there is a very nice, like, uh... Yeah. <laughs> what, what I imagine spring would smell like, if I could smell anything going outside, because my mm. allergies are hitting hard right now, <laughs> like, I open the window, like, oh, close it! <laughs> Keep the pollen out. What about Corona? No, oh, screw right. that. I just don't want the pollen in here. <laughs> We're high enough off the ground. Maybe it won't get here. Unless someone coughs from the roof and then it gets drafted into the window. Oh, screw it. I'll take that over the pollen. <laughs> I'll take that risk. Oh, oh. What about I, you? I feel the same. So the first thing I had was ethanol and steel. I don't know why steel. steel. It just reminded me of that. Yeah, and then the last one, although I really wanted to put something with lilies, I ended up saying cardamom. Oh, I don't know what that cardamom. is. I'm not 100% sure, sure what it means, but my brain's telling me that's what I'm smelling. Cardamom. Car cardamom. It's kind of like when I said Car fig. Duh. <laughs> it's exactly like that. And then I'm like, I'm not really sure what a fig is, <laughs> oh. but I'm pretty sure it's there. Carl, since last time you didn't know what figs are, we brought you a bag of figs. <laughs> <laughs> Dried figs. This is going to complement the whiskey so well. <laughs> oh yeah. I, when so, I smell it, then I'm going to confirm what I believed the last yeah. time. We are not uh, sponsored by figs in any way. Just yeah, it's a fig fruit in general. We're looking okay. for sponsors. But, uh, hey, figs, if you want to sponsor us. <laughs> <laughs> we'll but take yeah. it. So uh, this is for you to take home or taste later. All right, we'll probably uh, taste whatever later. So, all right, nice. Sweet. I'll put it over to the side. All right. Yeah. All right, mm -hmm. let's do this. You guys ready? Yeah. All right. So, Nesdrave. Nesdrave. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. We got to change that. It can't be Nesdrave today. Oh, yeah. I don't know how to say the Scottish one. Slancha. Slancha. That's all the UK? Yeah, that's, well, right. it's all of Scottish and Irish. Kind okay. of a Gaelic term, I guess. I Ireland or North Ireland? No, they're, they're the still same. Irish. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so anyways. So finally, it's a taste of Slancha! Slancha! Is this is so solid. Mm. Yeah. It's kind right. of a little bit more. Want to go in reverse order? Paul, you want to tell us, uh... Mm-hmm. So, the first thing I'm getting, right as soon as it hits my mouth and just washes over, mm -hmm. warm delight, followed right afterward by caramelized cardamom. Cardamom again. Yeah. Even though you're not sure what it tastes like. <laughs> it tastes like this. We can go circular. I'm going to I'm gonna have to Google this later to see if that's actually a thing. I, I think actually... Steve knows what it is, but he... I, don't, never, I do know what cardamom <laughs> tastes like, yes. It is a... It the is first a time I heard spice. about that word was five minutes ago. <laughs> The word cardamom? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it is. What is it? Is it like spelled cardamom? Yeah. Okay. I don't know why you're saying cardamom. Because I wasn't sure, so I've been writing it with a weird half M, half N. I, <laughs> in case anyone I'm going to have to look this up later. I have no oh. idea what that is. Well, what are you getting? Uh, oh, what am I getting? Okay, well, <clears throat> I think the first note that I, I think everybody's probably going to get it is it's like, it's like a caramel sweet smell. Yes, uh, totally agree. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the other one, and this one was uh, kind of interesting to me, and it was very subtle, and I bet you none of y'all tasted this, but it has like a Skittle Starburst taste. What? At the like very, like... It's what very flavor thin, Skittles? But it might go along with the floral smell, but it's kind of got a really... Starburst. Fruity Starburst kind of taste. Carl just want to inject his... Uh... Yeah, but yeah, we Scotch Koreanness into this. Hey, I've heard Scotch Korean commercials. <laughs> yeah. We got a <laughs> Scotch Korean, yeah, pagan yeah. Starburst. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm. You haven't seen that the Scotch Korean Starburst commercial? Oh yeah, so good. <sighs> they should have used you. Yeah, should have. Yeah, yeah. The you true Scotch color. Korean, I know. Yeah. But yeah, it's very faint. But mm. I still have like it's like this little fruity flavor that kind of more of a Starburst or a Skittle kind of flavor. Yep. Yeah. I don't know if anybody okay. else would know. Interesting. I, I did not think of that at all. So I just got brown sugar. I just like yeah, almost just a hair before it's burnt. Pretty much caramelized caramel. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Caramel. Caramelized the caramel. <laughs> Cardamom. Do we all say it differently? That's amazing. I have to say it does not taste any. Thing okay. near like what it smells. Oh yeah, it's just yeah, pleasantly it's, surprising. If you okay. smell it and think, oh damn, I'm not gonna try it because it's not good, you're 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 losing out. Absolutely. Because uh, the taste is real. It's for the price point, is pretty good. Oh yeah. And not like the smell. Oh so yeah. So you can't judge it by the smell. But I will say like that maybe, although this is solid and I love this whiskey, mm. it does 
go those are like negative points when you're like trying to score this because mm -hmm. you do want all of those phases when you're drinking right like yeah. if i pour yeah. myself a glass i don't want to drink it right away i just want to smell it yeah. enjoy that for a while and then eventually you get to tasting it right so yeah. this but when i judge a whiskey i a lot of times look at like more than just like the smell and the flavor so part of it is like how much did i pay for a bottle of this whiskey and definitely when i look at this one this one we i paid what 27 bucks for it $27, so, yeah. Yeah, for a $27 whiskey... Out of this, yeah, it's... Like, yeah, I'm gonna go past the smell a little bit, because, yeah, it's kind of got Definitely. a smell that's not necessarily the same as a high-end whiskey, but the yeah. taste is... It's, Dude, it's, under, under 30 bucks, it's competing. Like, it's a solid, solid oh, whiskey. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we were just yeah. saying that one of our earlier episodes was like, a Lefroy Select for 40 bucks, you can't beat, or a mm -hmm. Lefroy 10. Yeah. This yeah. is $10 cheaper than that, and I would say it's on par. 30. Like, it's not as... Uh, PD, yeah, mm -hmm. but it's solid. Like if you just want a whiskey to like, yeah. enjoy, yeah, I, I can enjoy. Decent this one, sure. have on the shelf, have for mixing, have for drinking, yeah, maybe have for on ice. Well, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't convinced Coleman yet of that. Mm -mm. Okay, I dig it. Nice and smooth. Oh yeah, very smooth. It's ridiculously smooth. Mm -hmm. While we got to know this whiskey a little bit, let's get to know Carl just a little bit more. We have a very interesting question. Uh, do you have a go-to whiskey on right now? Like, late at night, you come home, you're tired, or you maybe just after dinner, you're reaching over to the shelf. What's the bottle that you grab? Ooh, let's see. A go-to whiskey for me would probably be like a bourbon. If I went with a bourbon, my favorite bourbon is the Statesman. It's the old Forester Statesman, mm. okay. which is based off oh, of the movie The Kingsman, uh, Kingsman where so they came to the States. So. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Didn't uh, like it as much as the first mm -hmm. movie. The first movie is probably in my top ten. The it's a really movies. good movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yep. really funny. Yeah. It's a. It's kind of hard to find sometimes, um, but it's it's pretty solid bourbon. Yeah, I've only had it at your house. Whoa. Whoa. Guys, look at your glasses real quick. Do you see this reflection on the bottom? Mm -hmm. On the table. No, unfortunately, no, because mine's empty. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you need. <laughs> okay. No. Yeah. I don't know what you. Do you see this? Just like. Read it. Yeah, the Glen Cairn class. Does, do they all say that? Yeah, always. <laughs> oh, wow. What? I've yeah. never looked at the base of a glass. Grab with, like, one of the other ones. Grab a it's random like, one. Yeah, here's the Balvenie glass. Oh, wow. They all say that. Yeah. Did thought, you guys know that? Yeah. 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 That's the whole point. Here's the Kowila glass. <laughs> what? I'm not gonna lie. I thought you thought that the whiskey wrote out Glen <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Okay. I've never noticed they all say that. And I have yeah, like yeah. so many of them. If you guys ever had any question of whether or not we were an expert in whiskey, <laughs> we are not. <laughs> I definitely knew what this glass shape was called, but the fact that they all say it on the bottom blows my mind. <laughs> the box? Yeah. What I mean, the hell? We are about as far away from experts <laughs> as you can get. PSA, read your glasses. <laughs> Read the fine print at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> you need to take a picture of this for the podcast, because this is blowing me, me mind. <laughs> blowing me mind. <laughs> and did you know, if you look down while you drink it, you can read Glenn Carey yeah, yeah. That's how I first noticed it. I was like, oh, it says it right there. Do you know how much whiskey we've drank, and I still have never read the bottom of a glass? You've you never, never read the bottom of your glass? This is like yeah. years. Oh my god. To do what I talked about earlier. All right. Good idea. So what we're going to do is we're going to put one measure. One is perfect, yeah. And we're going to let that just develop in the glass. And then we'll visit it after all our cocktails and everything. And so we'll know. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to our second one. I'm so excited. Are you guys ready for this? Yeah. Yeah. No pop here. This is James. No pop. <laughs> <laughs> this is a twist cap. Yeah. I'm not even gonna let you smell the bottle. Give me your glasses. This okay. is gonna be incredible. Wow, look how deep amber it is. Oh, oh my god. This looks like that Macallan that you really love. I mean, look at the color on this thing. Yeah, that this is. is. You guys, put your nose into this, into this. and enjoy. Oh, oh my. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Bright. Holy <laughs> This is cool. This is great. That's why I didn't let you smell the bottle. Oh. This has to be in a Glencairn. Oh my god. 
I would love to wake up to this every day. My mouth is salivating right now. This is amazing. All right, we're gonna go back to that ABC store and buy. Okay, so um, they, um, have they still have yeah. it. I'm buying more. Don't yeah. worry, I got I got connections now. Nice. I'll get us any bottle we want. Right, we need to get a couple more of these. Oh man, this is I can't heavily believe. coffee. Oh my god. I can't believe they were selling okay. this bottle at the store for twenty nine ninety nine, knowing that it was that hard to get. Yeah. Wow. So, Thirty bucks. Well, ABC can't sell for. More than the actual price, because it's state yeah. sanctioned, so they can't. There's no secondhand price. Yeah. That's probably why it was running out so fast. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. That's amazing. <sighs> okay. Well, uh, the the nose for this will be shocking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting no cardamom from this one. Oh, you can't even see through this. This is. It's thick. got a solid coffee look. Yeah. So it definitely has like that coffee look, not necessarily just a whiskey look. How long are you start us off? Start a bottle. Well. The first thing I'm getting from the nose is coffee. Oh. Consensus, I hope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the second, check it out, you ready? Cool. Mama Juana. <laughs> Mama Juana. Yeah. Yeah. Right? right? That's exactly what it, it does smell like. Mama like Juana. That. Yeah. I mean, Mama Juana does have a distinct coffee taste and smell to it. Yeah. Oh. Mm. It's been a long time since we've had that. I had uh, to throw that out. Bottle. The last time someone had the punishment bottle was Carl. Oh, that was no, he had something else entirely. <laughs> that was... That that might kill you if you had too much. <laughs> that, was, that was the Mama Juana, man. That's, that was intense. I st I'm still dying. <laughs> still dying now? Uh, yeah, it never quite leaves you. It took a while, but uh, it's, it's still slowly eating away oh my insides. God. <laughs> what are you guys yeah. getting from this? Carl. Uh, well, uh, my first three notes here might not be legal to say, but I'll say it anyway. Sexy. Uh, legal, of course, agree. It's legal. Or, agree. Or yeah, guys. this episode, orgasmic. Oh yes. Uh, this one might be bleeped. Uh, makes her wet. <laughs> 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 yeah. And uh, licorice. Licorice. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. We all agree on the coffee parts. So I don't really have to say, but I yeah. do smell a uh, licorice in there. Licorice. Oh, interesting. Oh. Yeah, I didn't put licorice. Well, I don't. You don't like licorice. I don't eat much liquor, so I actually can't really call to mind what it would exactly taste like. It's like Dr. Pepper. So, when I'm not I a huge fan of Dr. Pepper. When I first take a smell, it's strongly coffee, and then yeah. the longer I smell is when I start to smell licorice. Oh, okay. All right. So I guess my uh, my tasting notes. So again, yeah, coffee. That's you got cool. coffee. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Whoa. Um, and then it's not like the actual nose, but it gets the. It's just the feeling of breakfast. Like, this is how I start my oh, breakfast. So, like, definitely. This is. I guess you can say it's like a syrupy kind of. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 A little bit syrupy and a little bit sweet. And that's why my last note was tiramisu. Ooh, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, you hit it. Yeah. All right, let's that do does this. Make or what? <clears throat> okay. Slancha. 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 That is, that is, uh, ooh. Wow. That is interesting. I'll go because I don't have much. Okay. I got raw espresso. Like it when you still actually have some coffee mm -hmm. beans in your coffee. Like it's very strong. Okay. And tree bark. More of that mama juana. It's exactly coffee. mama juana. Yeah, like <laughs> tree bark. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think what I would say is it's not just a cold brew, but it tastes almost mm -hmm. exactly like the cold brew nitro from Starbucks. <laughs> I think Carl and I are always on, like, yeah, dude, on not point not, together. Yeah, not yeah. just the cold brew, the nitro version. Yeah, yeah. Like it, and it's that smooth too. You want to hear my note yeah. on it? This is cold brew for sure with that sweet Irish cream from Starbucks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, they have that. Yeah, it's 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 that. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I also wrote, this is the one we're yeah. making Irish coffee with. Oh yeah. Nice. Yeah. This this will definitely probably be the best one you can ever get for an Irish coffee. Definitely. Yeah. So I so I love the nitro cold brew from uh, Starbucks, and I also like the sweet cream, the mm -hmm. Irish cream. Mm -hmm. But this is how I order it. I'll get the cup. It's half cold nitro cold brew, mm -hmm. half sweet cream, and they're like, "What?" And I'm like, <laughs> "Yeah." Do it half half and I have a picture I can send you guys. It's like the goofiest <laughs> coffee you'll ever see. Cause the, I feel like the cream or the foam uh -huh. goes too fast when you're drinking it. Uh, Not when half the cup is foam. <laughs> you then it's wait, do you just order a grande serving in a venti cup and get them to fill up the venti no, cup? No, no, I'll get the venti cup, but I'll just get half. Like I told them, don't fill up more than half of it with coffee. It, it and they'll of, do it. it you, just, you can just order the grande, get them to put it in a venti cup, and then fill it up with that. 
with cream. That way you're not try paying yeah. Fenty price. True. It's kind of like a Vietnamese coffee, only with Irish cream instead of condensed oh, yeah. milk. Oh, I did. I, I, I brought condensed milk in case we wanted to use that to make the Irish coffee. Mm -hmm. We might make mm -hmm. two Irish coffees. This is going to be amazing. Or it's three. Be... We have three whiskeys. We can make right. three Irish oh, coffees yeah. if, we can, uh, if we can live through it. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Okay, so I do want to say one yeah. thing. Do um, you guys notice the slight lack of the alcohol presence? Like, yeah, well, that's that was the other it thing. Is well guess, below. Guess the ABV. 40. Flat. Percent or proof? Percent. Okay. I don't think it's exceeding 100 proof. Definitely not. <laughs> Way but, it, but if it's less, up. if it's less than 40, it's not a whiskey by American standards. So it might not be. I it's think it's here. below 40. I think it's 39.9. Okay, so here's my theory about it, and that's because we live in Virginia, and Virginia liquors have to be sold at the ABC store, right? For sure. And if it's under 40%, is it still classified as a liquor? Could it be sold at, like, Giant or Safeway? No, 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 because right. no, no, yeah, cause the, under 40%, it's just, it's not a whiskey. It can be some other liquor. Yeah, yeah, but it wouldn't necessarily be restricted to being sold at the ABC store. Oh, interesting. So if you can only get it at the ABC store, to me, it would have to be legally that's over right, 40%. That's right, because soju, you can buy at a grocery store. And that's roughly 80 So this definitely is over 40. All right, reassess your bets. I still think... It, I it, think it's got to be a flat 40. I don't think it okay. can be much higher. Uh, what do you think? We're going to be surprised. I think this is in some gray area, but I think it's under 40%. I'm going to say 42. You think it's over 40? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to change mine because everybody's sitting like right there to 40. Yeah. I'm going to go with a 40... 46, just to be like a little bit surprised. I'm gonna, all right, I'm, I'm saying 37. I'm telling you the answer is right now. 37. Whoa! What is it? Wow, we all suck. 30, you guys ready for this? 37? 30%. 30? 30. 30. 30. 30%? Yeah. So you're absolutely right. This is not very strong at all. Yeah. I was, yeah, because that was the first thing I noticed. It was. Yeah, so this isn't actually like fully. So you, what you're saying is, I can have this in the morning and not be an alcoholic. <laughs> Your wife will not get mad at you if you drink this in the morning. It's only 30%. That's pretty much wine. I really think that's pretty which much Which is pretty water. much orange it's juice. Pretty yeah. much water. <laughs> that's, it's pretty much coffee. That's, yeah. what, that's what I'm saying. This should be sold at my local grocery store. <laughs> it be in the wine section. This should be on the shelf at Starbucks. And I'm like, hey, can I have some nitro cold brew? And can put you put Jameson. in a shot of Jameson cold brew? <laughs> No, can you just pump nitro through this? Can you imagine That's what I want. all of the twelve thousand Starbucks branches having to get alcohol licenses? <laughs> that would be a nightmare. All right. When you said, "Oh, we're all wrong," in my head, I was like, "Whoa, fifty-five! <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I was getting mind blown for a second at how high it was mm. <laughs> because it definitely didn't taste like it made that high. Yeah, this is just morning coffee. This yeah. is completely different from the proper twelve. Like thirty. I don't. This is more of the core for me. Than anything it else. is would be a liqueur. Yeah. It's not a whiskey. Yeah, not yeah. by American standards, not by Canadian or anywhere standards really, because yeah. most most places classification of whiskey is forty percent yeah. or up. I'm shocked, but it smells nice. It smells nice, and the color Absolutely. is immaculate. It is a uh, yeah. just beautiful. Yeah. What if we just get a ni nitrogen pump and pump this through? Oh, Make a nitro too. bottle. Of nitro Jameson and cold Jameson cold brew. Cold brew. That would be. Where do you get a nitrogen pump? I have no idea. I like the idea. Everything I that Chargenade is better. We need to open up a Guinness. I'm, yeah. I'm so excited. Uh, Guinness is coming soon. Mm -hmm. mm. Guinness, if you want to sponsor us. Palman, it's your turn for your question. Uh, what is your go-to? Log on 16. Next Ask question. <laughs> no, like on your shelf right now, what are you pulling off the shelf to drink? Have oh, man. Night? Yeah, unfortunately, that one's always empty for me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, then it would be a Lefroy. Yep. Like, I always have Current, one or the other. Currently, right now? Yeah. Like, okay. the select is here, and I just like that one a little bit more than the 10. Yeah. Um, I don't know why, I think it just has a... It's a little smoother mm -hmm. than the the 10 is, like, smacks you. Just... Yeah. Pee. Just pee. Like, I don't want any more pee. <laughs> well, you're getting more pee. It's just... It's too much, I think. Like, uh, And I think that's what I like about Kaula and Lagavulin. Like, mm -hmm. they're not as heavy. But they're still okay. complex. Yeah. So Lago yeah. one for sure, but if not Lefroy, oh, always okay. have one of the two. Very nice. I wish actually, uh, Brook Lottie. Mm. Mm. Brook Lottie, whatever. Like uh, I used to always have the classic Lottie, like the Isla Barley. Yeah. It's just, it's fantastic in it, but it's not really peaty. It's just like I'm obsessed with them. So 
I wonder yeah. uh, what it would take for them to sell us that 1989 cask. <laughs> like, the whole cask. It's gone. It's gone. <laughs> uh, yeah. We drained it. Yeah. We're the ones that finished it. Oh, <sighs> man, that was man. amazing. That's my favorite distillery, man. Yeah, although I love Lagavulin, like, mm -hmm. for their 16, like, Berkelotic is They must have known the best. we were coming and pulled it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it was. <laughs> And that tasting room was like Rigal. That it was crazy. Tasting nice. room. That's the kind of living room I want someday <laughs> when we yeah. have a cottage on our cul-de-sac in Scotland. Yes. It'll be the shared living room in that no, passageway did, between are, our house that are. Didn't like, we say Montana? Are we doing oh, Montana? Yeah. If we figure out American Pete, we can just retire in America. Oh yeah. yeah. Montana's oh, also really pretty. Montana. I would love to live in the mountains yeah. somewhere. That's that's the number one. I'm state still trying to push Oregon. To to. I mean, whatever. I haven't. Been I do either, Oregon so. Anything yeah, up there like Montana, Oregon, Washington State? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love that. Area. As long as you have good internet connection? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why yeah. do you want Oregon? They want to be closer to the ocean. Just a little bit. Okay. And and close enough to the country. Cliff on cliff overlooking the sea. Oof. Oh man, the drive on Highway One was fantastic. Yeah. I just love it. It was great. I like mountains and woods and lakes in the middle of the mountains. Yeah. We can go hunting. But actually just go up in a treehouse and just drink whiskey and not actually hunt anything. Yeah. Speaking of which, we still gotta go to Bulgaria and do some mountain hiking. Absolutely. Yeah, Steve had a blast doing that. So. Yeah. <laughs> it was great doing it with a twisted ankle. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get, oh man. We'll get them to come with us. Pullman, I just turned my ankle. That's so, great. We only got like six more miles. Actually, <laughs> also, like next winter, we should go on a like, well, we're, ski trip is what I'm gonna say. <laughs> or snowboarding, whatever. I'll do snowboarding. <laughs> I'm never skiing again. We, we go back, maybe Kim might wanna try the oh snowboarding. Oh my god. Last episode, we filmed the night before skiing, which is great, because if we had filmed after skiing, <laughs> Dude, I might not have been the most it was, pleasant person. It was the most comical thing I've ever seen. You were like, you went up the the, bit, the bunny slope lift, and then you got off, and then you couldn't stop. You did a 360, and then you flipped on your back onto the next bunny slope lift, and then it was just slowly pulling you up. Yeah, and, and in my like, mind, I'm, I'm just laying there, I'm like, this is my life now. I'm forever stuck on this thing. <laughs> It's it's a good thing that you didn't go up the mountain because it turns out the only no I did go up the mountain oh you did oh. I went down it once that green slope turned into a blue dot, like square for a section yeah for a yeah. section it was really yeah. hard yeah there was a section I got there and I was like holy I have a video yeah yeah and you had to go down it too because there was no other way to get down yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I couldn't exact you can't exactly turn around on this yeah. thing no and I was like. Hmm, do I want to just unclip my skis and slowly walk down? I was like, <laughs> I went down and I picked up a good amount of speed, and then all of a sudden it just went out from under me. And oh I just no. like, on my back, I went, <laughs> <laughs> We did all the way up. We were, squares. yeah. We were doing really The first good. time going down, I was still with Steph. And yeah, I, just I went down, and then she just stayed at the top, and she was like, I'm not going down this. <laughs> and I was like filming the whole thing because I thought it was hilarious. And she's just so mad, like, come back up here and help me. And I'm like, I, I can't. Oh, yeah. oh man, it was right. We actually went down every slope that was up. I'm just saying, it was yeah, two and a half good. hours of practice, and I got up there and I was like, yeah, I went up here too soon. <laughs> <laughs> I think I practiced for 10 minutes and I'm like, I'm good. Let's go up. Oh, oh man. My God. That was rough. No, it yeah, was really nice yeah, at night yeah, though yeah, because yeah. there weren't a lot of people on there. Yeah. And so we were able to just book it down the slopes. It I'm totally great. sticking to uh, snowboarding. No one. That I can go down blue safely. Yeah, I, I with that's why I avoid snowboarding. I would be Oh, you're not good at snowboarding. <laughs> no. I mean I've I mean tried I much prefer. Yeah, no. I've never done snowboarding, but I'm not a ski enough, so I, mm. I think I'd just stick with the skis. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But don't go down like the steep slopes. The so Bulgaria next winter. All right. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. Cool. All right. What's next? Oh, is it time? Okay. Mm -hmm. It's time. Since my wedding, I've actually been to the Clarks and had it again. Nice. Um, Where do they get it from? I don't know. Robert's Irish, so he probably has some connection. Where to get it? I'm jealous. Apparently he gets it somewhere in Maryland, though. It's not like... I, wherever it is, I will go. Yeah. We just don't have It's so worth it. Well, that one's... <laughs> I love Carl's pores. <laughs> I want you as my bartender. <laughs> we oh, get it. That one's amazing. Can we yeah. smell this now? This is the opposite of Jameson. This one is intense. Uh, this is the best Irish whiskey that we've had yet. 
True. We're obviously not very uh, familiar with the Irish whiskey game. Like no, not at all. We typically don't buy... Jameson anything. or Bushmills is all I've ever had. I've had Red Breast and Teelings. Are they good? Do you like them? Typical pot stilled Irish whiskeys. Good. I think the only ones I've ever had was the Proper 12, the Jameson Cask Mates, and the regular Oh yeah, Jameson Cask Mates. Stouts. The solid. Stout one's good. The IPA one I don't really like. I don't think I've had the IPA one. Oh, yeah, the Stout yeah, one's yeah, solid. Stout though. one is solid. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just yeah. had a whiff of something there. I gotta add it. There's a lot happening in this. I don't yeah. think I'm hitting it at all. I, I, no, I just did another smell, Complex. and it, yeah. it, it's still like a whole different smell than I smelled the first time. Oh yeah, it's a different smell if you waft it versus put your nose in it. Really? It's definitely sweeter, yeah. Ooh, okay. Man, yeah, I yeah, love that's, this. That's See, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I want from a whiskey. You just sit here and smell it for a while. Yeah. Like, you don't even have to put it in your mouth. Very typical. Vanilla. And then, yeah. now I go into plumbing territory. So I got, again, wildflowers. Forest after a sun shower. Yes. Fruit smoothie, and because of that wafting thing, grape juice. Wait, say your second one again. Forest after a sun shower. Sun shower? I love you. <laughs> I was like thinking about it, like did I hear it right? I did. Yeah, so the first thing I smelled was like a pear smell. A lot of the scents to me were very fruity, and mm -hmm. so the first one was a pear, and when I thought about it, I kind of smelled an apple smell a little bit. Okay. So it could have been like pear with a pear, because I think apples and pears kind of similar. Uh, but the reason I brought up the wafting was because when it just kind of went past my nose, it smelled very grape-like. It was a whole different smell. Yeah. And so that was kind of last one. And then kind of going on uh, Plumman's thing here, I thought I'd try one. Is it Gentle Creek? Oh, yes! <laughs> so, <laughs> Absolutely. So put that on there. Yeah, gentle I, Creek. I got a Gentle Creek. Well, I definitely agree with you guys. I got the vanilla. Um, I said black pepper. That's what I'm getting. Like, oh, it gave me that spice, yeah. for sure. So. I, I really so. wanted to say a fruit, but I couldn't nail it down, but I agree with all of yours. Like grape, apple, or pear. Definitely just some fruit. I just couldn't. Oh. My brain wasn't giving me anything. I did get toffee from this. Kind toffee. of on the back of the black really? pepper. Yeah. It's something sweet. Oh my god. But it's a spicy sweet. Yeah. And then I'm really glad Carl made us waft, because upon wafting, I got a Yamazaki-esque floral scent, which is mm. like very in line with both what both of you said. Okay. But wafting definitely made a difference. It's, yeah. a, it's a whole different smell when you waft it versus oh, yeah. actually putting yeah. it in a little. We we'll finally drink this. Oh, thing. I'm so excited. Oh, yes. Okay. Slot so, uh, I think that's wow, the last how one. How is this so good? This is bringing a tear to my eye. Nope, both eyes. Both eyes tearing up. This is amazing. This is bringing back memories of your wedding. Just so many good emotions. So if we had to pick a drink to classify my wedding as, this would be it. Oh, man. This is so good. Yes. Your wedding being a completely <laughs> open bar. That open with, bar. You know, crazy good. Some quality oh, yeah. liquor oh, available yeah. there. Oh, yeah. People got oh, that's, hammered. That's why I went with that place because they said this is the standard bar listing. You can add more if you want. They just buy it from the ABC. So I'm like, I don't think we need to. John got so mad at us because Flo and I took it in turns to just because you, you had you had your whiskey glass right yeah. and there's like by law yeah. by law or whatever in Virginia they have to put ice in it yeah. and because I wanted you to have a good buzz going so I just kept going up to the bar getting a new whiskey just keep swapping out your glasses so you never got watered down whiskey yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and John was like and he's you know, he has to help you and Kim go to the table to table, and he's like, STOP IT! <laughs> <laughs> Every time I show up, I was like, oh, here, Carl, let me help you out there. And he's like, STOP HELPING HIM OUT! <laughs> I never had an empty glass in my hand, so to all the groomsmen, these two were groomsmen, and uh, one of our best friends, Sip, yeah. who's in uh, Finland now, they uh, made that a great night. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very good night. So good. Anyways, to the taste. I guess I'm ready. You're first. I'm last. I said it tasted heavenly, sweet, spicy, and it could just go on and on. Like, I'm just picking up more notes. Yeah. As this thing going. Mm. And it lingers. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. sheep dip, gone. Like, right. it, oh, oh, almost disappears. I'm still tasting right now. I'm talking right now. Oh, yeah. And it's coating my tongue. Over Nose, and over. Everything. Yeah, when you like breathe. Everything just keep yeah. recycling. Mm. Yeah, this is... Fantastic. Stunning. I can't give a flavor one, but I'm gonna say like fireplace chimney. Oh! Dragon's breath. You've been voted off the island, my friend. What? Yeah. I'm just gonna say pine cone, but definitely like that. It's nice and warm on the inside, but it's not like just here in your throat and here. Also to the tip of the tongue. 
So that's why I'm thinking like a dragon's breath, but also like a chimney. Mm. Oh yeah. First thing I wrote, fireplace. Carl and I are on wow. the same page. Absolutely agree. That's what it reminds yeah, me yeah. of. It's beautiful. Yeah, I was thinking like pine cones in like a fire pit kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm still getting floral, but it's like a spicy flower. Mm. If there is one in the world, Kimchi. this is what it would be like. Yeah. If you're stuck out like in Antarctica with no shelter, this will keep you alive. Mm -hmm. Or at least it's a good last drink. This is the kind of whiskey I want on my cabinet. Like, yeah. It has all three phases. It's just solid in every way. So, this is the so whole. Though, it's so hard picture. to find. No, I know. We have to like, Damn but we'll start traveling. Once we go to UK for the festival every year, we can just pick some up. On Seth's birthday? No, we have to go, remember the first week. So we'll be back by the seventh every year. Otherwise she'll divorce me <laughs> slash break up with me. Okay. What is your go-to whiskey right now? So I actually have two that don't I'm be like greedy. alternating back okay. and forth. Tell me but, one is Japanese. Huh? Is one of them Japanese? One of them is Japanese and it is the one I'm going more for mm. right now. Okay. And uh, it's the Nika G and G. Mm. It's the one with the samurai head. I oh. love it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Because I actually had like three bottles of that. I, I was hoping to make it to Japan, which we're moving our trip because of the coronavirus, but my coworker, I was like, you gotta get one of these bottles. And I was yeah. about to pick up a bunch of those on the way home. Nice. Yeah. That's what I've been drinking more often. Nice. Of late. And you notice, like, each of us chose a different type of whiskey. Not yeah. Just, just a different brand, but just a different type overall. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Scotch, bourbon, and Japanese. What's your second one? Talisker Storm. Nah. That's a solid whiskey. Yeah. That is a yeah. very good one. But that one, like, I'm not reaching for as much because I also don't have a lot of it. So, but, like, I do find, like, myself craving it. Yeah. No, it's really, it's so much better than Talisker 10. You know which one I kind of want to try again? What? Oban. 14? I've forgotten what it tastes like. Or any of them. But oh, yeah, okay. 14 yeah, yeah. is the standard. Yeah, yeah. But I, like, their just, standard is good. It's yeah. a good, great, great whiskey. Yeah. It's like salty, I guess. I don't know. I just, I, I miss really it. really like the town that distillery was in. I, yeah. We had more time. I would have liked those. Yeah. Wow. Like, a day there. It was a very unique distillery. Yeah. It was just like a building. It was right on the edge of like a little bay. And if you if you want to take a ferry, and the ferry will drop you off there. Well, and yeah. The reason why is there's a little bay. It's, that's actually yeah. one of Old Bond's bottles. Yeah, it's yeah, a little bay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, and the distillery is kind of like in this alley, so it's a little bit more downtown than like a lot most oh. other distilleries. But I gotta say, like the town was really nice. That little uh, breakfast shop that we went into right before going to the distillery yeah. while that we were waiting for the distillery great. to open. It was delicious. Yeah. That was fantastic. The coffee was good. Everything was good. Everyone. Yeah. The scones were delicious. Oh, yeah. The cream was fresh. The jam and jelly was like made in house. Oh, my God. I could live in that town. That was amazing. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. I could live in Scotland. Mm -hmm. I could. Just amazing. Yeah. Right after we buy that little Airbnb that we got. If not there in Portree, which is where we got those fish and chips. Oh. Yeah. Steve kicked the bird. That's near. That's out in style. <laughs> yeah. Portree. Great fish and chips. Annoying ass seagulls. I will murder them. You yeah. kicked the I'm leaving, kick I'm leaving this in the video. Seagulls, but to watch your f***ing beaks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. He did kick one. <laughs> he did. <laughs> in defense of my fish and chips. Yeah. Hell yeah. Probably the best fish and chips I've ever had in my life. Carl said that. Steve, how much did this bottle cost? This bottle is $65. If you can find it. Yeah, that's, that's the difficult part here, right? Like, <laughs> Absolutely. Actually finding this whiskey. Let's move on to water, shall we? Just a quick splash of water, and we'll use Carl's little uh, table spinning method. Carl, drink this, and as you're drinking it, I want you to think, reflect upon what whiskey is always on your shelf. And after you take your drink, you can tell us. What do you find yourself buying again and again when that bottle runs dry? I feel like I know Paul's answer. That's it's a very straightforward answer. <laughs> that is better with water. It is. Wow, it opened up. Yeah. Whoa. I think I can see. The alcohol sting is gone. I, yeah. I think I can see why Conor McGregor puts the ice cube in his. Yeah. So I'm really curious what that's going to be like now. Yeah. Because uh, that would be, it'd be like this, but chill in a way. I absolutely sometimes. dig it. Yeah, yeah that, that was, was a good one. Solid. Yeah. Wait, so Carl, mm -hmm. answer the question. Uh, well, probably the one that would be on my shelf the most. 
Like, if I go back and buy, like, go back to the store and just keep buying the same one, yeah. like, the one that I would like the most, uh, it's probably going to be the Lafro, um, probably 10-year. Lafro 10? Very nice. Solid. Okay. Because uh, I do like a good Petey whiskey. Punch you in the face with wow. that yeah. one does get you. <laughs> and the nice yeah. thing about that one is if someone comes and visits and they're not you, I don't have to worry about them taking the whole bottle. <laughs> <laughs> that would turn people off <laughs> if they don't like it. Yeah. yeah. This is so what was the stat? It was like only 10% of all whiskey drinkers like Pete. Pete oh. whiskey? Yeah, it's like Probably. real minority. Maybe yeah. even less. Yeah, there, there were yeah. those uh, hey, Lafro. I'm fine with that. Yeah. I don't have to compete for my whiskey. Absolutely. I'm good with it. Did you ever see those Lafro commercials where they have non Lafro drinkers try it? No. no. Oh, you should you should check them out. It's okay. Pretty good because there's some people that just make the greatest. It's like, oh, whoa! <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's definitely uh, a whiskey that requires a certain palate. Water reminds me of Mama Juana. I feel like that was gonna be the worst one with water. More or less the same thing. I have to yeah. say, now it's just coffee. <laughs> now it's just coffee. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> and not not even like cold brew or like cold brew nitro. It's regular coffee. Like yeah. a drip coffee. That one was already now. diluted to to yeah. the point you're supposed to drink it at, and like anything lower than that would just be like the water. mixture they have right now is perfect. Yeah. yeah, put a little water in there, then just for sure. Just maybe make a put cup a little bit. Of of, maybe put a little yeah. bit of cream. Ooh. That's about it. Yeah, we'll, we'll get there. We're getting there. We're gonna for get sure. That's cream. definitely the one we're making our, our Irish coffee oh, yeah. with. Pullman, what's always on your shelf? Lagavulin 16. That's the one I always look for the price. Mm -hmm. The first thing I do when I walk into a liquor store is look for the price of the Lagavulin and benchmark it to see if it's a ripoff or not. Ah, okay. So yeah, anything around 70, 74 nice. is like reasonable. Mm -hmm. Below that, insta buy. It's usually above that, mm. then I'm like, this place is ripping you off. It oh, goes as high as 100. It's like, come on. For 16, get out of my face. I like it better straight. I think I do too. It's like, I, I prefer it to be a little bit more overwhelming. It's it spicier towards the end with water. Yeah. It's yeah. like, normally when you add water, it kind of waters things down a little bit. It make, it's supposed to make it easier on the palate if it's a strong whiskey, but this one isn't doing that. Yeah. Mm. That's how I feel about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think only the proper 12 really benefited from a little bit of So, rough summary, proper 12. Add a splash of water. Yes. It'll do you some good. Mm -hmm. Kinahan's, or, no, Kinahan's, no, because... Not terrible, not good. Yeah. Um, it didn't improve. Neutral. Yeah. yeah. Jameson Cold Brew? Definitely. Definitely no. not. And then, my always on the shelf, almost the same as Carl, but it is the Lafro Quarter Cask. Oh. Um, okay. And it's always the one I, like, I'll take to parties mm. if... I know there's a few people that like whiskey, but have never, well, typically I think this is more for Asian people, who just never ventured outside of drinking Johnny Walker. Mm. Well, the other thing, too, is if you have the Lafroic and Prince Charles comes to your house, oh. you know he's going to drink it. <laughs> okay. Yes. I don't know about Prince Charles, but uh, hey, Prince Harry, if he wants to stop over... Yeah. He's closer now. He's in Canada. I'm getting so many news mm -hmm. notifications about their drama. It's like, please stop. I don't care. That's because you haven't read the Korean publications. Korean is no drama. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but I feel like within like the royal family, he's like the, the one that I would most down just to like hang with. Yeah, I think yeah, so. For sure. He seems like the guy that would be a great time at the club. <laughs> There's enough for sure. I think pictures and videos of him at the club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So why don't we rotate all one? Okay. So you'll get the proper, <laughs> you'll get the can and you get the cold brew. Yeah. And then... Just so like, you know, oh, so I'm not, okay. So I'm not just hogging all the can of hands, which is like, from our, at least our initial assessment, it was like the best one. It's okay. All right. Yeah. Not saying the others are bad. But this, can of hands is just this, in, in a different class. It's And you can tell by the price. Yeah. It's, it's three times as expensive. <laughs> it's solid. In the terms of Conor McGregor, it's in a different weight class. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Slancha. Slancha. I'll be honest with you, I don't like it with ice. But I don't like most whiskeys with ice, so I'm just biased. Yeah. Okay, okay. I'll say my opinion on that one towards the end. I think if this was chilled and not with ice, it would be better. I have whiskey stones. Yeah, I would probably use a whiskey stone over the ice, because the ice is watering it down like I would add water gotcha. before. Yeah. But I don't know it, what you're talking about. I think this is actually okay with ice. I'm just biased. It's probably like I said, I think it's just a, a me thing. Yeah, so I think the Jamison Cold Brew tastes good with like yeah. a little chill, but I think I would use the stones over ice because the ice does kind of water it down mm -hmm. a little bit. Yeah. 
I necessarily wouldn't pick to put ice into it, but it's not bad with set ice. I will say, can I hands on ice was, I didn't like it. Yeah. Um, very unfortunate. It changed it so much, it wasn't really the same whiskey. Yeah, yeah isn't it? It's very unfortunate to put such a fabulous whiskey on ice. So the proper Agree. number 12 loses all of its smell with the ice. Yeah. There is As no does a lot of whiskeys. They um, do lose a lot of taste and It actually kind of smells like tap water now. It's not bad, yeah. but I, I don't think I would ice any of them down. No, yeah. no. All of this is trash. No. The only one I would actually drink chilled would be the cold brew, but I would, like, if I put anything in the glass, it would be the stones over actual ice. Yeah. yeah. Or, or just would, keeping it in the fridge or something. Yeah, just right? keep the bottle yeah, in the yeah, fridge. Yeah. Probably be easier. For sure. Because um, I can see that one being really good when it's colder. So ice is a bust as it normally usually is. Yeah. <laughs> Have we had anything that's like been improved by ice? I would say probably if you put like a, a full bucket of ice cubes and a glass of Scoresby, it might be better. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because um, that's I can't remember that. which one that was like. I mean, I want to point out Glenroth's. <laughs> it's like, just the butt of every yeah. joke we have is Glen Ross. Yeah, that's the <laughs> iced one. Yeah, about it's Farkas. its own fault for being in such yeah. a good <laughs> bottle. I don't think Glen Farkas was on any of our whiskey episodes. Yeah, that's a future episode. Yeah. yeah. And, well, Glen Farkas, if we had, if, I, if you let me on that one, I do have my perfect shot glass from Glen Farkas. Oh yeah. yeah, it's a glass in the shape of a shotgun shell. Call, so you're call always welcome shot. as a guest. It was yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Even if we have other guests, you can come on. Yeah. Guests, whenever you want. You're a permanent <laughs> member of the Whiskey Talk Forum. Yeah. With this ice I mean, and the when we were planning this show initially, what was it? like? It was Tina's birthday, like over a year ago, mm. when I first brought up the idea to you guys. The original mm. idea was all three of us, and we never even thought about having other guests. It was just the three of us talking. Yeah. yeah. It's just unfortunate. Carl kind of lives too far away, and his work is super busy, so... The work schedule can be... Completely yeah. chaotic. Yeah. yeah. Call it the Carola virus. <laughs> Carola. <laughs> Carola. Can we talk a little bit? That about was a dead wait, joke. Wait, wait, wait. Can we talk <laughs> a little bit about this coronavirus thing that's like yes. ripping the entire world in its grasp right now, right? So yes. the, the the funniest thing you, you sent me earlier this week was people were people taking good liquor and using that as hand sanitizer because yeah. you can't get hand sanitizer anywhere. It is sold out, but why does... Oh wait, I'm going to ask Carl this. Carl, yeah. why would using Tito's vodka not work as hand sanitizer? Do you know? Well, I'm not a scientist, so I'm just going to go off on... It's okay, you got two sitting here. A normal explanation for a non-scientist is if they didn't put it in a hand sanitizer, that means the chemical makeup has got to be different. Yeah, that's pretty close. So yeah. when you when you look at a hand sanitizer or any kind of product that you buy, it's going to have a list of ingredients on the back. Uh, and I haven't actually looked at the differences, but I'm pretty sure there's a lot of stuff in hand sanitizer that's not in a bottle of whiskey, thus you can drink whiskey and you can't drink hand sanitizer. Yeah. And so more, more or less, yeah. More or less. So when you put yeah. those chemicals together, sure. it's going to be a more powerful alcohol. Where, you know, even though a bottle of whiskey can be a powerful alcohol, it's not going to be so powerful that you'll die if you drink it. Vodka, as most other drinking alcohols, it's not a high enough alcohol content to actually be used as a cleaner. That's that's the one thing. And two, uh, most of most hand sanitizers, their alcohol content is isopropyl alcohol, right? Yeah. So that's, that's again, as you said, it's a different type of alcohol entirely than the ethanol that is found in liquor. But what did I tell you, Palmer? Is the reason why you shouldn't be using. So, so you're worried about the germs on the outside? Steve was like, Pfft. You should be worried about the germs on the inside, mm -hmm. and you should be drinking that vodka. <laughs> <laughs> That's clean out your body. <laughs> Drink your alcohol. Well, that, yeah, yeah. Actually, that makes sense. It's, it's the reason why they want you to wash your hands with soap. It's not because of the germs on the hand. It's the germs on your hand that can go into your mouth. Oh yeah, I mean for sure. So, yeah, because yeah, yeah, we're not doing it because of the germs right. on the hand. No. If all you crazies yeah. out there actually want to like get the best of both worlds, why don't you just take some alcohol, swirl around your hand that cleans your hand, then upend it into your mouth and drink it. <laughs> Only if it's over 60%. Only if it's over 60%. Otherwise, so that's the thing. It's like, if you yeah. don't have at least 60%, I didn't know about the isopropyl thing. I thought any alcohol works, but maybe uh, some are better yeah, than no, others. Yeah, no, any alcohol works as a cleaner, but I'm just saying, like, uh, most of the ones, I, I believe, on, like, alcohol pads that you're cleaning, 
for like wounds and stuff like mm-hmm. that, and as well as in most hand sanitizers, I believe it is isopropyl alcohol. Okay, so, cool. Yeah, there's a, a really nice. While well, we're on still in the science vibe, I'm not gonna talk about this paper in depth, but there's a really there's a PNAS paper that just got published out. So it's like uh, proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, super prestigious journal, and uh, they there was a two 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 articles. So one was looking at like historical data that was published from the 1918, I think, mm-hmm. Spanish flu. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And all, so like, it's an interesting uh, problem. All these things we're doing now with social distancing and shutting stuff off and like people not going to work. I thought those were just random. I've never heard of that before and I've never lived in a pandemic before, so I didn't know anything about this. But I guess experts in this field, they these are standard things that have always been done every time a pandemic comes around. And the scary thing about pandemics is it's a disease that you will catch and there's no current cure. So the best thing we can do are these strategies to try and limit the amount of people that get the disease. That's the only thing you can do when there's nothing you can do to intervene and make the people better. And so the question is, the first paper was based on all these historical data, specifically a 1918 one, what did they do, right? And that's that's it. And then there's a second paper which follows up on that and use mathematical modeling to like predict which, uh, uh, I guess, interventions or like strategies are most effective. And so there's like three lines in this graph. The first one is if you don't do anything, like 80 to 90% of people will get sick. So definitely do something. Then there's this thing called the optimal strategy. And there's a whole table of all these things that are currently happening right now in like a bunch of countries, including ours. Mm -hmm. And so there's like an optimal balance of what you should do and, and enforce people to do because the best you can hope for is only 50% of your population getting the disease. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can't get less than that, but 50% is like the best case scenario. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then if you overcorrect, like if you're overly aggressive, it'll like make a bunch of things go down, but then like, I don't know, like three months down the line, there's actually a second bump that's higher. And then instead of 50%, around 64% of people will still get it. So you can't be overly aggressive with your strategies mm-hmm. and you can't do nothing, but there's like optimal balance and you can yeah. use math math models to tell you what that balance is. It's so cool. Interesting. Yeah. So I think that's what they're kind of like thinking about. The government's thinking about well, like, they're enacting all these. Good. Just, I mean, that this is all modeling based off of like past pandemics. Only yeah. past, yeah. yeah. Past yeah. And I, the only thing I would say to that is I'm not entirely sure that being overly aggressive will cause that second bump to be nearly that high mm-hmm. because also we've advanced research technologies, medical technologies. 100%. Yeah, this was 100 yeah. years ago with exactly. the Spanish flu. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Definitely. With, with the aggression level right now, and I think it's probably, I mean, rightfully taken considering the severity of this disease because it's, its mortality rate is remarkably higher than past diseases and the infection rate is just insane it's um, yeah because of the weird incubation period yeah yeah um and of course it's it's only super dangerous to those with an immunocompromised system yeah um but i think with the way i think like our current healthcare technologies and current medical technologies as it is now um as aggressive we are we shouldn't worry about being too aggressive just because that second bump really shouldn't be that high with the way the modern world is right now. It's just with our advancements, our ability to just... But there's nothing you can do about this one. You just sit in the hospital. Uh, a bunch of different laboratories out there are aggressively trying to develop mouse models to model this COVID-19 infection. Mm. So we do have uh, biological models in place now to start looking at how this disease will progress. And with that, you can anticipate how it will mutate, how it will affect um, certain cohorts down the line, and then take the necessary action if, for one, I think most important is the people who have the power in our government, in our healthcare system, do implement the proper steps at the right time. Yeah, yeah, for yeah, sure. So, very important. This coronavirus also slightly affects our... Uh, Specifically, our little uh, whiskey talk show in, in a way. So you you talk, you sent out the you <laughs> contacted them or like you you read no, no. a news article news, on... newsletter yeah because okay, every yeah. company sending out newsletters like right, letting about... you know their policies yeah so what's going on so ABC which is the Virginia, Virginia statewide uh, liquor distribution yeah company and alcohol beverage control yeah, yeah 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 so they sent out a thing where they were like well most companies right they don't come to work 
work from home, and that doesn't change liquor stores either. So they were mm -hmm. like, if you want to come get some whiskey or something else, <laughs> they didn't word it that way, but yeah. for our purposes, if you want to come buy some whiskey, call ahead and check to see if the store is even open, yeah. and then come in, because yeah, they might not be staffed, and I totally agree with that. I think yeah. like, don't come in, try and do social distance as much as possible, but it's crazy, because, you but know, for me- trying, They're also trying to limit people in the stores too. Right, mm -hmm. yeah, they're like, and they don't want too many people in at one time, so it's, yeah, it's definitely being like, it's just t being taken very seriously, it's crazy. Well, I'm gonna just say, because I'm not a scientist, I'm a finance kind of guy, yeah. On the financial note, that's kind of also impacts a lot of people's financial oh, stock life. market. Oh my God. As you can see, the stock market is not like how it. many thousands of points did the Dow yeah, drop seven in the last month? I, think, I looked at my retirement account, and let's just say it was a reason to open another bottle of scotch. <laughs> <laughs> but I would just go and give my two cents. The thing about uh, this is, unlike maybe other things that have happened, this is considered a global pandemic, so you're going right. to see that. Because it's globally, it's going to impact the markets on a global, like a lot of our goods and services that we use might be international and this yeah. is really impacting that. So you're going to see some shifts in the stock market and things like that. But oh my God. This is, so like, yeah, this we, is, we, we don't want to get political in the show, obviously, but just a recent comment from our president, he just said it wrong, even though like he didn't intend it to be wrong. I think it was just, it just came off as incorrect, mm -hmm. but he had said that the the ban on certain travels to Europe also affected shipped goods, which of course, um, Homeland Security and everybody else involved with that went on and corrected it immediately afterwards. But that was also the reason for the, the steep plunge recently because people thought, holy crap, all of the shipped goods from Europe were also being halted and not being able to import into America. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that caused a, a rather mm -hmm. steep drop. Um, but it was corrected, and I believe on Friday, all the Wait. stocks kind of bounced back. I, like, yeah. Was, well, uh, when it comes to stocks, I was a little happier on Friday than yeah. it was on Thursday. I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> when it when it comes to stocks, stocks are really impacted in two major ways. Um, there's more ways, but the two big ones, and the first one is obviously the economic health of a business. Yeah. Because you're all your stocks are tied to some kind of company. Yeah. So that goes up and down. So you're gonna see a little bit of a dip if like company especially international companies are going to be impacted a little bit uh, but the other reason stock market goes down a lot of time is people panic sell and that's kind of one of those things you don't want to do because our the market is really resilient and it's going down because there is a pandemic but when the pandemic comes and go like, when it passes industry is going to start coming back to its more normal self so in long term you can say we're going to be a little bit behind financially the more we would have been without it, yeah. but it's gonna recover and you're gonna get most of your money back. But so, if you pan if you panic sell when it's high, then you're really just losing money in the long run. I have uh, I have two points yeah. though against that. So the first is it's been an eleven year bull market. Mm -hmm. So it's like high time that we go into a bear market. Mm -hmm. And so this is just the intro to that. So I like even though you expect it to bounce back, it will not bounce back as high as things were. Mm -hmm. Like that's just how cycles work. Even so, but like if the if the if the markets are coming down and if it bounces back up and you've sold out, you're really in oh yeah yeah you're in a don't loss, sell you're yeah, in a loss yeah. position. De definitely yeah. agree with you. Yeah. You can recoup some of it, but it's not gonna yeah. like come back to. I'm, I'm gonna look at the number the real quick so that you know where we are in the economy right now. So we're, it's, it's not any sort of financial yeah. advice. If you listen to this and you happen to lose money, it's not our fault. Yeah. Conjecture. Yeah. You should not be listening to yeah. three people who've been drinking shit ton of whiskey so, for over an hour yeah, yeah. about financial advice. So, so this is uh, yeah, this is what March fourteenth, right? So yeah. we're at twenty three thousand one hundred. We're kind of at a point now where the economy's gone down quite a bit. So if you're selling now, you're you're gonna probably be losing. So at the bottom. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it could yeah. go down, but I wouldn't necessarily sell now. It's actually a good time to start putting some money in. Maybe not right now. I would venture to see how next week starts first. Yeah. But depending on kind right of where Mark starts. Right out the 30 days quarantine. That, uh, yeah. Self imposed at most. I, I would say when all. Of, under. Yeah, when all of these businesses and schools start going back, right before that would probably be a good time to put a little bit of money into it and then you'll get a little bit more out of it. But yeah, selling now is probably not the best idea. It only really works for like the first person who sells and the economy is still at the top yeah, and then for you sure. make some money. But yeah, yeah, yeah. most of us 
we kind of notice after that happened. <laughs> so uh, if it already dropped, I wouldn't sell. Don't panic sell. Not a good idea financially. Yeah. Um, even if it doesn't come back as high as it would have, you would still lose more money if you took money out now instead yeah. of yeah, yeah, yeah. trying totally to agree with you. Uh, especially if it's a retirement account, because retirement accounts, you might even have to pay penalties. You can't even touch those. Yeah. But you can touch them, but you it's have like to... like 50%. You have to pay taxes and penalties on it. It's and a It's lot. a good amount of money, so you might be losing a lot more money than you think yeah, yeah, by yeah. pulling it out now if it's a retirement account. So definitely something <laughs> yeah. to... Pull it out as cash. What is yeah. that? So, That's ridiculous. Um, yeah, so coming from a finance field in my company, which is a finance accounting company, it's everybody's already talking like, don't sell a dime at this point. Yeah. Uh, if anything, put some money in. Even if it still goes down, the value of your 401ks or your uh, stocks are still, you're going to have more money into it. So when it goes up, you'll get more value out of it. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, after that heavy bomb, I believe it's time for an Irish car bomb. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Good, right. luck. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. Slancha. Slancha. All right, ready? Throw One, up. two, three, go. God. Oh my god. That last Steinbaum. I like Steinbaum. I think that was, we that was like a bomb on my life. That I was, think that we all know bad. that I'm the only sober one now. <laughs> There's only one of us who still has beer. Cool. I was saving it for tomorrow. <laughs> Tomorrow's Sunday. You gotta save the Lord's beer for the Lord's day. Alright, so we got a measure Irish cream. Irish cream from Carplay. We got some espresso. Espresso by me. By Plumman. We've decided that the best Irish whiskey to make your Irish coffee with is the Jameson cold brew. <laughs> Boom, right there. <laughs> Slime <Slancha. laughs> mm. Wow, solid. Oh yeah. This is really delicious. This is the second best cocktail we've ever made on camera. What is the name of that hotel and Isla that we got breakfast at? I oh, there was only one place. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was the only one that was open. It's the remember? only one that's open during Isla Fest. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. don't remember what the name of the hotel is, but fantastic Scottish breakfast. Oh, oh and this just that reminded place is, me. And remember when we went there at night? The club scene was just them all drinking and, and singing. That was the no, entire island. so awesome. No, it's not even that. Like, yeah. we're sitting there singing, and then the distillers from Lafroig mm -hmm. just show up, and they're all like, yeah, what's up guys? How's it going? <laughs> and it's just like you're just partying with all the distillers on Isla. The whole island. It was, was there. awesome. It, it was, was the awesome. best thing ever. There's only one location you need to go to in Isla Fest after 6 p.m. And it's this location that we can't remember the name of. The but hotel. I was the hotel. It's, uh, it's the only hotel. Yeah, it's the only much. place. Right it's so. the only place open. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. yeah. It's right next to the pier. Yeah. Um Mm. Near Port, I think it's called Port Ellis. Right? Yep, Port yeah. Ellen. Yeah, Port, Port Ellen. Ellen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Port Ellen. Yeah. I remember I, I shot a photo of you two dropping the best album of all time. <laughs> 90s style. Oh, like man. Just man. That there hell? brooding. Yeah. 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 Oh, my God. That, that picture's <laughs> going right here. This is like, if, so if we ever dropped an album, that's our album cover. Exactly. I hate you. <laughs> Scotland is so great that I didn't even try, and I had the best pictures I've ever taken. Oh, yeah, man. You didn't even have to try. What do you guys think about this cocktail? I like it. How do you like which coffee did we put? Which coffee? It was a Starbucks. Actually, let me. What this is important. This what is did important. You put? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, it's very it important for the cocktail. When it comes to Irish coffee, a lot of times it's mostly about one, what is the coffee you use, and then two. Yeah. What whiskey are you putting in? Because generally, right. like Bailey's Irish Cream is your kind of standard. When it comes yeah, to, that one's just a filler in between. Irish and Cream is Irish Cream. Yeah, much. there's not yeah. like there anything well, different. Yeah. I think the biggest impact is probably going to be what whiskey you put in there. A little bit of whiskey is perfectly. Yeah. So if I put it, I would say the whiskey yeah. is going to be like your strongest yeah. factor. Then your coffee is the next one, and then your cream is going to be like the constant. So oh, the man. coffee in the Irish coffee was a medium roast. From Starbucks, pretty standard. The Pike Place. Yep. Yeah. All right. So I think it's a solid one. I did grind it for about 10 seconds just to get a little bit of a finer grind because this one was pre ground. It's Arabica coffee. Yeah, it's not bad. I like it. All right, yeah. so Plumman, uh, this is a question from a guy who loves espresso but is an opposite of making it. Uh, what is the difference between like regular coffee and espresso? The grind level, like the, yeah. the, so the took, granularity of the yeah. coffee. So if you take a regular, what I would use is like a regular drip coffee and just grind it yes. more. Yes, except Carl, there was a paper that came out 
just like one or two months ago I that heard says if it's coarser, it's coarser better. Is better. I haven't read it yet, so we should talk about this. We should check that out because I heard, I saw that it too. It blew up everything that people knew about. Like espresso is always the yeah. finest ground. I saw world. that too, and I was yeah. like, I wanted to ask because I wasn't sure. Yeah, how, I haven't read it. How yeah. does so? Would that not mess with the the system of the espresso? Because no, you just have high pressure. Yeah, water. how would you have higher pressure if the ground is coarser? It's not actually trapped. So it, it still fills up the chamber. Yes. So like you but still build up that gaps. pressure. There's yeah, more yeah. air gaps. Yeah, yeah. It takes longer to fill it up, for sure. So there's just be more water than coffee. Whereas if you have like a cup, I don't know, I don't know the, the measure, but like a thing and you yeah, grind yeah. it down, there's less water that gets in, so it takes longer for it to. So like the idea before was, the slower it seeps through the espresso, and if you have like really nice espresso machines, it pours out like syrup. Like it's slow as hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of that crema. Yeah. The head, now, right? yeah. yeah. Now that's not really, that's what they're challenging. Wow. The idea of that is being challenged. Hilarious thing. When I was in Italy, they always gave me a cup of water with espresso. Yeah, I was absolutely. Like, I was like, what is that? You're yeah. American. The friggin' Italians never got a god I'm sitting there like, get the shit out of my way. I don't need that crap. Dude, I don't mind. <laughs> I mean, like, I took after it- After I finish my coffee, yeah, I'll have some I water. took it for the hydration, so yeah. I don't have to buy water. Yeah. But I'm sitting there like, are you guys assuming <laughs> I can't handle it? <laughs> it's hilarious, because <laughs> yeah. Deanna and I went to like this coffee bar out in Fairfax or something for some random morning coffee that we did. But we got there, I got like some espresso drink. And I also got a little cup of water. We both sat there and we like stared at it. We're like, this is <laughs> like, so as people in the science world, we just drink a lot of coffee, right? Mm -hmm. And so we're looking at this water, I'm like, what am I supposed to do? And Deanna's like, I don't know, maybe you like rinse your mouth with it. And I'm like, what if I just wash my fingers with it? <laughs> yes, <that's laughs> so nice. Nice. Yeah. Love it. Dude, my last day in Italy, like Kim and her friends are all like shopping for shoes and stuff. And I'm like, I don't I don't care about this. So I'm at this at this bar. Like this espresso bar, and they give me this water, and this other couple comes up, orders espresso, and they don't give them water. I'm like, why don't they get water? Yeah, <laughs> like, you American! <laughs> and they were like, American can't handle strong Italian espresso. I'm oh like, my god. Hey, yeah, I can't get the shit out of my way. <laughs> like, <laughs> Slap the water out. <laughs> my out blood my is half coffee. <laughs> so the cocktail is simple one part espresso, two parts hot chocolate, <laughs> and. Finishing off with proper oh, we don't twelve. Have Bailey's? Oh, oh do Bailey's? we need Bailey's? <laughs> yeah, we need the Bailey's. Slancha. Is... Ooh. So I got... solid. It's funny because uh, when if you ever go to Scotland and you look up how to say cheers and like Scotland or Ireland, uh, how like. It's not spelled necessarily the same way as you would pronounce it. Not at all. I N T. -E. But it's an I with an apostrophe, right? Yeah. So it's a different I. Do you want to like say how you pronounce it correctly? Yes. So that like slow enough, so someone who's going to Scotland would know how to say it. Absolutely. Solange. Moss. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> you go. Cilantro. <laughs> That's what, Paul, that's what Paul Matana said. You have to say something. Say it to the camera. Slouch up. Alright. It's up to you to figure out who's correct. <laughs> it's not Plumman. Uh, <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> Slouch up. I don't even know what you said. It, got, uh, like, it, it just died off at the end. Alright, guys. Not, so, as, as we're drinking this delicious drink. This is Paul, actually real good. Plumman kind of came up with, you know, Hot chocolate on top of an Irish coffee. Um, it's good. It's so good. It's right? so good. Like, is this everything you wish for? Yeah. This is this is how you would make a hot chocolate. Yeah. With, with so, alcohol. Yeah. What if I said that? So, in the spirit of St. Patty's Day, you caught a leprechaun, and it was like, you have. Please release me. I will give you one wish. What is the whiskey of your wish? Any bottle that you have never tasted before. There's a Macallan 62, a Lafroy 65. <clears throat> you know what I'm mm. saying? Like that. Those those are pre-nuclear, pre-nuclear contamination. Whoa. Like whoa, 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 whoa. when people wow. cared about their craft, there was no industrial like thought about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like that's, that's not like everything was made like artisanally. So I want any of those, like anything over 60 years. I don't care what the need a specific name. Macallan 60. Lefroy 64 also like come on. 
Like, that Pete must have been, like, from the 1700s Dude. or some shit. You know, if you're John, drinking history, you know, if nuclear that radiation. That whiskey would be thing, twice as old as you. I, I love that idea. If nuclear radiation is a big thing, then all Japanese whiskey might have been different before Hiroshima. A hundred percent. No, Japanese whiskey might not have really existed before. Yeah, it actually didn't until they bought the one scotch. I know, but if, they, yeah. if Yamazaki and all of them did what they did beforehand, mm -hmm. it might have been entirely different. Dude, that'd be interesting. Yeah. So that's that's my leprechaun wish. It's something that I will never like. We have to pay like. 80,000 for one of those minimum? No. <laughs> Our wives would divorce us. I, I also feel like the whiskey industry has evolved so much in the last hundred years that, like, I'm not sure I would want anything older than that, you know. Alright, so what's your model. bottle? Give me your answer. My, my bottle? Yeah, 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 what's your wish? My bottle is actually a bottle that exists nowadays. These all exist, by the way. Yeah, yours exists, but yours is also nobody knows the taste of because nobody wants to open it. Coward. Exactly. <clears throat> I, I do consider everyone that's bid for a bottle and then didn't open it. Like, why the f did you pay that much money for it? Yeah. I'll be getting my money. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, so if what's you're buying bottle? it for the sake of money, you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're needed. Same with those people hoarding toilet paper right now. Yeah, you, well, they're just you hoard toilet it. paper, if you hoard whiskey, you're in the same camp. You, you're an idiot. I still love that meme where it was like, it's like, you tested positive for coronavirus, and he's like, but, but I bought like 400 rolls of toilet <laughs> paper. <laughs> How? How? He's like, no. he's like I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. I saw that, I just... F***ing idiots. There's, there's no yeah. point, yeah. Yeah. But for me, the bottle, if I caught a leprechaun, it was gonna grab me any wish, the Froic 30. 30? Yeah. I saw it as a standalone bottle at the Lafroic dis distillery when we went there. I didn't take a picture of it or anything. Like, it was just a glance. I was like, wow, this bottle is older than I am. And it's at a distillery that I love, making whiskey that I love. For sure. I would, like, in my wildest dreams, I couldn't imagine how much it would cost for such a bottle. But if I could get my hands on such a bottle, I would love to taste it. What happened 30 years ago? Yeah, you're literally yeah, drinking, you're drinking history. history. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Yeah, I, I think there was like a quote I sent you or for some something It was like uh, you might have been going through a hard time at the time and I was like I was like time heals all wounds. Yeah but Whiskey is time in a bottle <laughs> So if you wanted to heal yourself just drink a little bit of whiskey Yes. Yeah. So mm. that's what it is. That is deep. I love that. Yeah. I, 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 that that's that's my bottle of choice. A Lafroig Thirty. If anybody want to send us a bottle, I appreciate it. I'm gonna have sex with that quote. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. Oh, what is your favorite? Oh, what is your? You wish? got a leprechaun. Leprechaun's like leprechaun. Got a rainbow. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's blasting off with the rainbows about to What are you going to ask it to get you? Okay, so well, I'll start with my favorite show. Well, one of my favorite shows is uh, is Ron Swanson and Parks and Rex. And that man loved the Lag of Woolen 16. Now, not getting the Lag of Woolen 16, because that's easy to get. Yeah. But I it remember... Is, it, is, it is easy and expensive. But in the very last episode, he decided that he wasn't just going to bury gold everywhere. He was going to diversify his portfolio. So in that episode, he bought a commanding share of the Lego Woolen distillery. Oh, and spoiler alert! And because of that show, he got a special edition Lego Woolen whiskey. Now, the actor for Ron Swanson is Nick Offerman. And there is an Offerman edition 11-year Lego Woolen. Ooh. That is really hard to find. I've, I've read never I've seen read it. it. I've read about it, yeah. I really want to try it. Carl, are you saying if we get that bottle, you're going to come back and get some of this? Oh, show? yeah, absolutely. If, oh my God. if that bottle is in house, we will do this for done. you. Done. So It's already done. I, I, I've I never seen it on the show. some contacts in the whiskey yeah. world. Yeah, like, we're getting I mean, it. that's part of mm -hmm. how we track down this uh, Jameson yeah. cold <laughs> brew. But, uh,. I think with all of our resources pulled, so, we can get this bottle. I want to I say something real quick. Yeah. The Jameson Cold Brew. Yeah. 
out of all the ratings we have, this is the first one I would firmly put into cocktail territory. Because it actually enhances Absolutely. every cocktail mm -hmm. we've made. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's amazing in cocktails. Like just it's I never thought I would say this about a whiskey. Perhaps it's not a whiskey. Either way we treat it. It's a gray it. area, for Solid. sure. It's Solid. a gray area, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's but this Solid. this is our first mm -hmm. cocktail bottle. Yeah. Cocktail bottle? Yeah, I would yeah. totally put this in your inventory and use it whenever you're trying to make someone a hot chocolate, which they will always yeah. except you gotta pay out your now because it's hard to find. I thought it was a whiskey until I tasted it. Yeah. Then but I realized it's not even close to a whiskey. Yeah. It's a liquor. Slightly like content. stronger. Guys, I, I would say this this time around, the uh, cocktails was a resounding success. Oh, it was, it was my favorite cocktail episode to date. We did a little bit of Guinness. Oh. We, we, we did, well, I did a lot of Irish whiskey today. This is a great St. Patty's Day. I brought you guys some Guinness chips. <gasps> Can Man. you show all the Guinness stuff we have real quick? Because you unveiled the Guinness chips. Oh my what God. else do we have that's Guinness? All right, so we got three Guinness coasters, right? Give this, Carl a coaster. special co coasters. Yeah. So you get to pick which coaster do you want. I want Carl to choose first. I'm going in the middle. I want you to choose next, and I will take whatever's yeah. left. All right. All right, ready? Three, two, two one. one. Bam! I got lovely day for Guinness Ooh. with the toucan of Guinness. Mine's uh, my goodness, my Guinness, and this bird oh, is Oh, you got the ostrich. Again. I got yeah. the same thing. My goodness, my Guinness. <laughs> I got a bear, bear, which I'm terrified of, by the way, because those are the most dangerous animals on the planet. I love bears. I also got us a bag of Guinness kettle chips. Oh my god, guys. Oh, sounds amazing. Guinness rich chili. Alright, you guys ready to try this? Yes. Okay, everyone grab a chip. Mm -hmm. True chips right here. What is or, it? What's the or thing? In, in Ireland or the UK, crisps. So where did you buy this? I bought this from a special source called Wegmans. Mmm, Wegmans. <laughs> oh my god, this smells like the... This is great for What's the black thing there? that was in a circle shape? Okay. Yeah. It's a blood sausage. Black blood pudding. Blood sausage. Yeah. Black, black pudding. pudding. This is what it smells like to me. It smells me. like black pudding. It, it yeah, does, you're, yeah, you're right. It yeah. has the smell of black pudding. All right, oh. everybody. Spacha! Spacha! Mm. Oh, that is really good. That's a lovely, lovely crisp. Mm. Yeah. Okay, everybody want more? Yeah, I'm gonna yeah, 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 grab my own. Dude, that was delicious. Wow. Dependent Usually crisp. gimmicky chips are trash, but this yeah, is yeah, yeah. This is good. Oh yeah, God. God. In the spirit of St. Patrick's Day. We all got a deck of Guinness playing cards. Mm. We'll play this later, probably off camera. If you are gonna come play a hand of cards, drink some whiskey, have a little talk with us, you know, reach out. Whiskey Talk Forum on uh, Instagram, Twitter, at Talk Whiskey, or mm -hmm. you can watch us on YouTube, hopefully you are right now, at Whiskey Talk Forum. Mm -hmm. With That's an E. W H I S K Y. No E. Let's try these whiskeys that we've set aside. The idea here is, does this taste different after sitting out for a while? Oh, it smells the same. Either right. I don't remember, but I feel like mine does smell a little different. Now we're tasting each other's one place over. I feel like that's the only one we can be able to say something about. Mmm. Plum and that will be spread by this one. That's I actually really like it. But I haven't tasted the, the one thing is, I can't remember how it originally tastes a little bit just because we had so much. Can't it's remember. solid, dude. It's but solid. It's okay. really. It gives me real good. It's really good. Okay. Yeah. The smell is really good, too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Ready? Last rotation. Slouch it. Slouch it. I really like that one right now. The pro that's the proper. More than this one. Proper. But this one is very complex. Like, it feels subtle mm. and it's just a lot happening. That one is like an eruption. The proper. <laughs> Changed the most. Yeah. It's really yeah. sweet now. Yeah, like it, it's not some liquid. of its more volatile co components. Yeah, have evaporated off. We're mm. getting more concentration of the like the very deep flavors that yeah. like it, that they might be advertising in, in the proper twelve. But yeah, it's it's just it's really good, and I, it's it's so good now that now when I think about drinking it, I feel like I'm gonna pour a measure before I go to work. To drink it when I get home. Yeah, I actually really enjoyed this one <laughs> over time. I think that this one makes it sound cool. like an alcohol. Wait, wait. So you're you're gonna pour you pour yourself a measure of whiskey in yeah. the morning. Yeah. Eight hours before you come oh, home. I've well, done this. If I pour it before I go to work and I come home and I want a drink, 
it's going to be really good. Yeah. Uh, and it's yeah. good before you do it. Yeah. But it'll be even like better if I did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 For sure. Like that one was amazing with time. This one was amazing immediately. So it almost raises this question in my mind of like, is that what defines a quality whiskey? Like the longer it takes to mature mm -hmm. to something that blows your mind. Because that definitely yeah. blew my mind right now. That blew I my loved mind. it. I that. loved it. This one blew my mind hours Initially. ago. Initially. Yeah, when we had it, it's like, and that's maybe like what it takes to be a good whiskey. You don't have to wait hours for it to be like. Yeah, you pour it out of the bottle, it's ready to drink. Right, it's, it's at its peak flavor. Now I will yeah. add though, I still like it after a while. This is the Kenahan. Oh, so, don't get me so wrong. The this was my least. So, so what I'm gonna say with that is, it's so good that you can open it and drink it right away, or you can air it and it will still be good no matter what you do. With it's true, it. a lot probably, of whiskeys after you leave them out all night, but you probably shouldn't air it. You probably should. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's yeah. it's of good enough quality where you can do either. Yeah, and it's exactly. going to be. Good. I agree. Yeah, for sure, yeah, absolutely. And the uh, Jameson, just drink it out of the bottle. I got nothing Mix for it you. In a cocktail, Actually, pour this it on is. Ice. I don't think it changes. This leads at all. me into my petition for you both. Yeah. Okay, I think we should not put this one in the infinity bottle. It's not a whiskey. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's not over forty percent. It's literally I... just sugar and coffee. <clears throat> And it's gonna f the entire bottle that we've been working on. I would say price. that I would only do it if the concern is that it's not actually a whiskey because it's under forty percent. It's definitely like a ooh. Well, I might not. What you think on the taste um, though? It's <laughs> the face said it all. All right. So it's now the plums are tasting. Oh it's no! It's acrid. It's acrid. It's not like just bitter. It's it's repulsive. So in a way, do you guys ever use step functions? Yeah. So, okay. Well, when you drink the Kaula, it goes like from zero to one, and it's like amazing. Mm -hmm. The moment you have the Kaula Jameson concoction, it drops back down to zero, like instantly. <laughs> like there's no plateau. There's no smooth transition. Like oh, I kind of see what this is doing. Trying to no, amazing and complete, not <laughs> neutral. <laughs> like mm -hmm. uh, it's only bad because it's not good. Compared to what you get from this. You know yeah. what's in it. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, it removes the best things of that whiskey. And that's what I got. Yeah. It's fucking like a step Destroyed function. Destroyed 15 years of work. Yeah. 15 years. Well, would you agree? Put not agree? What do you think, Carl? I would Back say you definitely can't mix it with a Cali 15 because you're just ruining yeah. that one. And if it can't yeah. mix with a Cali 15, it can't mix with any of the other yeah. whiskeys we have. But right worst now. off, the smell is a lot worse. Yeah. Like the the taste, I mean, it wasn't it's, as good, but the taste was okay. Neutral. Yeah. It, but the smell was like, I couldn't smell yeah. it. I smelled it and I was like, no. Yeah. Gotta try it. So, yeah. so do we agree? Let's veto Let's, uh, the yeah. cold brew out. Let's just yeah. keep the cold brew well, out. Well, here's I'm the thing it's it right not here. even that hard to veto it because it's not a whiskey. Yeah. By yeah. our standards, 40% minimum. 40% minimum yeah. to a whiskey. Absolutely. It's not a whiskey. Absolutely. You guys are in some special treat. Meat, ginger. <laughs> Our little whiskey hound. Yeah, I'm just worried about my hair. Oh, yeah. So it's not it's a not over. <laughs> oh my god, she loves whiskey. She wants whiskey. She likes beer too. What's up, Dan? Dan? Yeah, of course. Dan? Ginger? Ginger, come here. Come here. Come here a little bit. <laughs> well, we got ramen for you guys. Oh, yeah. oh awesome. Did you go to the store? Oh my god. No. Yeah. <laughs> Your house. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah. Because I think oh we needed a pot too. No. We, uh. What do you want to put in here to put in here? We can put it here right now. You guys still recording? Yes, kind of. We, uh, we've been sidetracking way too much. Each of us pour a measure of our own glass. So, I need a proper Glencairn pour. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill up these Glencairns with two Glencairns. What am I gonna do with my cup? We're gonna drink. We're it. just gonna sip it. Everybody who hasn't had the, uh, the right, that goes for it. the girls. Try yeah, it out. It's really might, good. That might be for the audience. We, we have decided that the Jameson mm. cold brew is not true whiskey for one. Mm -hmm. Agree. And because of that, it doesn't deserve to be in the bottle. Agree. Mm -hmm. So let's start with the lighter one. Proper twelve. Okay. So that's one. Yep. The proper 12. Right. Half a measure. 
Just a taste. Whirl it around, Carl Vick's This down. is the most anticipated moment I'm of so our entire excited. podcast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I literally wait hours for this. Like, mm. we're only doing this podcast just for this moment. Yeah. Really. You want to smell it before I drink it? It yeah. smells pretty good, actually. Mm. Oh my god, it's sweet and peaty. It's, it's everything. It's, it's, so it's everything. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, oh, really it's so everything. It's so good. <laughs> oh my god. It's so peaty. Oh my it's god. Glenn Parkless and LaFroy. <laughs> and Ireland. Oh. Proper. Proper. Yeah, oh my god. Oh my god, it has Ireland in it now. Oh, oh reacts. Oh my god. So good. Oh. I don't know what level. Oh, oh, hold on. I can't. Hold on. Let me just oh. describe. Have you calmed down? Yeah. That was amazing. I want to describe this that to was amazing. I don't know what level of mm. peat this is at for this whiskey, wow. for this blend that we have right here. But this, this percentage of mm. peated malt whiskey mm. in this bottle. I'm gonna say prayer like, real quick. <laughs> Dear Jesus, that's some <laughs> beer whiskey. That was Amen. amazing, Carl. Oh. The rest is for the guest. Dear Thor and man. Odin, that was amazing. Thank you for. Wow, that actually Something. stopped the all light. my thought processes for a second. Oh right? Just that's that really a, good. That is astounding. That is, wow. wow. Like I'm tearing okay. up. You can't actually finish <laughs> that literally because we have to give our audience a little bit of. Oh, truth. You actually can't finish. But we're pouring another yeah. one, right? No, 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 no. Because just smell it. I mean, they can't try this. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. After yeah, 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 I'm about to add the Kinahan. Oh, to this. dude. Wait. All right. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Great. Goodbye, Kinahans. Jesus is what a great this. whiskey. Kinahans. So one that measure. That is hard to give away. Going in. That whiskey is so good. Get the hands number two. I'm cramping up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, this is every whiskey up to date? Nice. Six six months in the making. You guys ready for this? Bottles or no? You guys ready for this? So ready? Are you kidding me? All right. The higher proof whiskeys are coming through right now. They're coming through. They're coming through. Oh my god. Not in a bad way. In, in, a, in a fantastic yeah, way. Yeah, this isn't too overpowering. I like it. Oh! Oh my god. I really oh wish god. Ireland and Scotland had a baby. I'm tearing up. So good. Yeah, don't touch your face. It's against the COVID nineteen rules. Oh, yeah. Wow! Tearing up, man. This except, thing is so good. Except, I'm I'm just rubbing our face right now. Look, that took me like fifteen seconds though, but it actually absolutely hit me. It's much subtler than it was before we added the kinny hands. Yeah, but that but that extra proof and it comes that extra proof, yeah the extra alcohol content. Oh my god! It just opened up a world of flavor. This is amazing. I'm tearing up. Oh my god. Yeah. It's so good. I'm yeah. like, I'm, I'm emotional. You guys have no idea what you are missing right now. Not <laughs> being here. Look at and that. like, this yeah. will never this be- shit is so good. This I, will I, never be me. experienced again. Yeah. Like, can we just bottle this as is? We can remake it. No, we can't. With all the whiskeys we put in. We have to figure out what ratio we put in versus what we took out for each one. Oh yeah, that was a weird calculation. That was a weird calculation yeah, yeah, yeah. because Lug of Woolen 16 was not a full term. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't measure this out with like a graduated cylinder or anything. We measured it out by the Glen Karens. That's a f***ing measurement, okay? That because Plumman only just recently learned out is <laughs> what's spelled on the bottom of the glass. <laughs> I can't believe you both knew that. Okay, I have to say this. Ron Swanson once said that it's only acceptable for a man to cry at funerals in the Grand Canyon. Oh. I will cry for this. Oh. I am like tearing up, it's so good. Yes. Offerman, if you you somehow watch this episode, and if you wanna come, I will just pour you a glass of this. Oh man. No questions asked, you don't even have to be on the show. Like, just stop by, be like, hey. I'll just come by. I wanna try your whiskey. Yeah. Tell us about your day, have some yeah. whiskey. 
Yeah, I want to shake your hand. You don't even have to be a photo. I will pour you a glass of this whiskey. I'll pour you a glass of this whiskey. This is fantastic. Yeah, Done. Steve! Do you know any Irish legends? So why is it called St. Patrick's Day? It's about some guy named St. Patrick's. Alright. I think we need Kinahans. a Guinness. I pick Kinahan's. So, Infinity Bottle, what do you guys think? Final assessment, plum and go! Infinity Bottle is unique, one of a kind, an amalgamation of perfection, okay? It takes everything that you want from all the bottles that you like, and nothing that you don't like from any of the bottles that you hated. And I love it. Agreed. It's like the best whiskey times infinity. And that's reasonable. Mm -hmm. That's a reasonable thing to do. It's the best aspect of every whiskey that we've had to mm -hmm. date. Yeah. And um, you can't argue with this until you've actually come on the show and actually tried it. Yeah, please mm -hmm. come on. Send me an email at whiskeytopforum at gmail.com. Also, tweet us at... Stop tweeting us. <laughs> at Talk Whiskey. No. So Paul Lee can actually do the <laughs> job. Do not tweet us. Or if you Instagram, DM me at Whiskey Talk Forum. <laughs> Way more likely to get a response. W-H-I-S-K-Y, no E, Talk oh. Forum. Mm. And uh, we'll respond to you. All right, I <laughs> hope to see you on the show at some point. All right, so before we finish, uh, in the honor of St. Paddy's Day. St. Paddy Guinness. Slancha. Slancha. Happy St. Paddy's. Thank Carl, you. thank you, thanks again for coming on to our show. So much. It's been an absolute pleasure. I really want to watch uh, more. Thank you to Something Asian. Is that the right? Yeah, thing? no, Something check, Asian. Asian. Yeah. check out thank these you. shirts. Thank you, Something Asian, for these just amazing, amazing shirts. Guinness, <laughs> yo, hit us up if you want to uh, sponsor some of our episodes. You guys ready for this? Guinness. Yeah. We just, uh, we got all the Guinness, Guinness here. Anyways, you love dogs? Meet Ginger. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even notice. She is the most lovable whiskey hound you'll ever meet. I love this puppy. He did. Don't drink the beer. Oh my god, what happened to you? <laughs> I was like, you never I'll, even I'll show you the footage afterwards. Did I do it? Until the next time. Slancha! Slancha! I was also thinking, uh, if we get the cul-de-sac, then we can have, like, a, a secret underground pass that goes to a room that's underneath the cul-de-sac, so whenever they're coming home, we know, because they're driving on top of us. Oh, and then we rush home. Run back to your house! We book Quick. in there. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, no. Here's, the, here's the stupid part. All right, ready? We hear the car coming. We all freak out. We run to the wrong house. Yes, yeah. I was just thinking that. <laughs> and the girls are like, yeah, so what are you doing again, here? you idiots. <laughs>